TikTok health advice, which is something that someone mentioned, and I think it had a, a number of, of upvotes, which at first I thought, what? As someone who doesn't use TikTok and didn't prior to this, did not have a, an account or anything, didn't really know what it was other than like kids making dance videos and lip syncing and like some really funny stuff. I've seen like genuinely funny stuff from TikTok that people have shared like on Twitter. Uh, so I thought it was just that. So like, why would there be health advice on there? But of course there's health advice on there. If you think about any social media platform, they never start that way, right? They always start as fun little like, hey, share stuff with your friends and talk about what you had for breakfast. And hey, look, that's the person you went to high school with. Maybe say hello, you know, whatever. But eventually, eventually, there's, there's bullshit. Eventually, there's people selling stuff and people talking about nutrition and promoting whatever diet it is that they believe in or supplements that they believe in and also sell or essential oils. So of course that stuff's gonna be on TikTok as well. And it would have been really easy for me to just search like essential oils or alternative medicine or big pharma or something like that and find just really like stupid stuff. But I didn't wanna do that. I wanted to see like what comes up it, it, with just a more general term that a lot of people are searching for like health tips, hashtag health tips. So that's what I did. I searched that to see what's the first sort of things that come up when you search hashtag health tips on TikTok. Well, first there's this how to wash your vulva from an actual OBGYN. So, hey, that's terrific. That's a great start, right? Hey, what's up guys? Okay, so today I'm gonna teach you how to make your hoo-ha smell and taste amazing. You wanna taste like a pina colada if you have a boyfriend, or you want one. If a guy won't date you because you don't taste like pina colada or something s s similar sweet, I guess, sweet slash alcoholic, run away, run far away. They don't know what a vagina is or what it is supposed to smell or taste like. So fair bet that they're gonna be um, bad in bed. In all seriousness, there are a lot of anecdotes that eating certain foods can affect the way that we smell guys and girls. And this makes sense, right? You know, sometimes eating a lot of garlic, you can smell a certain kind of garlicky way, like your sweat. Obviously asparagus, right? Makes pee just smell so incredibly bad. It's insane. Also papaya, as a person who used to eat a lot of fruit, papaya always made my poop smell like super, super weird. I can't even, it's, it's just weird. That said, we do not currently have evidence-based medicine with strong research or long-term data to support or disprove what you eat does or doesn't influence the way you taste. So saying that her tips like will make your hoo-ha smell and taste amazing is nonsense. You know, maybe it'll change the way you taste slightly. Maybe it won't change the way you taste, but your partner thinks that it did because you told them that, hey, this might make me taste differently, which I mean, same difference, right? Like goal achieved. The one exception might be miracle fruit. You might've heard of this. It's the uh, fruit that makes sour things taste sweet. I haven't tried it. I really want to. It sounds pretty cool. So like you eat some, they have little tablets. You take a tablet and then you eat some lemon and it like tastes sweet, right? She does share that just briefly at the end of the video. I think she got it from, I tried five different foods to see if they made my vagina taste different. This is crazy. You taste like sweet tarts. It's like candy. It's summery. It's like paradise. Usually after a long walk, you taste salty. This is crazy. But excluding that, you know, expecting eating pineapple to make your vagina taste like pineapple or super sweet. Vaginas are vaginas. Dicks are dicks. They're all unique to some degree, but ultimately these are body parts where pee comes out and discharge and sweat and come and even blood, they're not gonna taste like fucking fruit. More seriously, she says in this little video that dairy can cause infections. Dairy is really yeasty and can cause infections. There are plenty of reasons not to consume dairy, but there is no evidence that doing so will give you a vaginal infection. Depending on what you eat, it can taste really bitter, or you can also smell and taste fishy, which is not what you want. No evidence for that, and also, Generally, a fishy smell is associated with like infection. If you notice any sort of strong odor, especially if your odor has changed, especially if it's accompanied by other symptoms like itchiness, redness, um, a change in your discharge, see a doctor. Don't change your diet and start eating more pineapple or whatever, or stop eating. Does she even say like what food 
is supposedly associated with smelling fishy. I think she just shows like a fish in the background. She's got like a green screen. Is she saying that eating fish makes you smell fishy? But generally, you know, her advice is just to eat less processed foods and to eat more fruit. So like, you know, it, it might not do anything for your vagina, but it's certainly healthier. You know, I, I've definitely seen worse health advice setting the bar high, you know? PSA, safe takeout food practices in COVID-19 pandemic. So she puts painter's tape down on her countertop, making a clean side and a dirty side. The food in the packaging goes on the dirty side and then the plate and cup go on the clean side. And then she puts the food on the clean side on the plate and in the cup without, you know, letting the package touch. She never shows herself washing her hands which is the most important thing. This is what the CDC recommends. They don't say anything about, you know, wiping down packaging with disinfectant, but they do say, hey, wash your hands after handling, you know, food that has been delivered, right? Packaging, mail, whatever that has been delivered. The one thing that she doesn't do. So not great. This one, uh, just fear mongering. I don't even, yeah. So this is supposed to tell you how you can tell if you had a period or a miscarriage. This is from a medical student, which makes it even more disappointing. Did you just get your period? Are you sure it was your period and not a miscarriage from a pregnancy that you didn't know you had? You want to find out? She says that you will know because the symptoms will be like a period, but like way worse. Um, and that the color, you know, it'll be a, a different color. It won't be red. It'll be like a brownish sort of color. This can be true. And we're talking about like a few weeks into a pregnancy, you know, when most of us don't even know that we're pregnant, right? Um, but it's not, it's not always true. Just because you have a heavy period or really bad cramps doesn't mean that you're having a miscarriage. For some of us, having really heavy you know, periods that last seven or even eight days, even with blood clots, that's just how our periods always are because we have a medical condition. It's not because we are miscarrying every single month. She is right though. If you are going through pads and tampons very quickly to check with your doctor, not because you have necessarily miscarried, you could have, or you could have this condition that myself and many other women have. And periods can change for other reasons as well. Just because there's been a change in your period doesn't mean that you miscarried. I don't know why this video exists. Why would you, it's just fear mongering. It's just gonna make people feel bad or worried for no reason. And you know, some of us, we have miscarriages and we don't even know there aren't any symptoms. So yeah, if you are worried about your menstrual cycle, see your doctor. Please don't get <laughs> medical advice from TikTok, even if it's a, a med student. Yikes. Another video from an actual health professional. Cool. Yay. Awesome. I don't get the dancing and the singing. Like I don't, it doesn't have anything to do with the video. Is that just TikTok? Like you have to have that in a video. <laughs> like you can't upload without without singing and like at least a song, but ideally like dancing as well. And I don't know, cause I see a lot of them like this. I guess that's just, that's just the form. Am I just being old? Like, look, I'm a, I'm a fucking millennial mom, guys. I don't understand this. Help me. Naturally get rid of acne scars from acupuncture fit. So that's a great sign. This is really misleading because he just says acne scars. He doesn't differentiate. There are raised acne scars and then there are those that are depressed, right? This rose hip oil, which is what this is, that's what he's saying is going to help, is not going to help you with depressed scars. And even if, with raised scars, there's very little evidence for this. We don't really know if this is an effective acne treatment. And even if it is, that doesn't mean it's going to be effective for everyone, saying that it will take care of your acne scars. And I'm gonna show you a great product to heal your acne scar. You apply one drop for up to two months and it'll take care of your acne scars is shit. You're just going to get people's hopes up, especially those who have depressed scars and they think because you didn't differentiate in the video that this is going to help them. Come on, man. Like, terrible. Oh, and when you click on the link in his bio, it's just like a list of supplements that he's selling. So awesome. Why, why do we think that these people are more reliable than actual MDs? 
Like, why do we think actu acupuncturists and naturopaths are more reliable? Like, they're constantly talking about how doctors, oh, they've been, you know, bought out by the, the vaccine companies and, you know, antidepressant uh, manufacturers and whatever else, you know, big pharma, right? And that's how they're making all this money. But then they'll listen to this dude and like John Mercola and all these people who are making tons of money selling supplements and ebooks and all sorts of shit. Like how, what, what? This one is also misleading, although I, I get the sentiment. So she says not to worry basically about the scale. That's the last thing in the video because her doctor said that she's overweight. Clearly she is not overweight, um, but that doesn't mean that the scale is wrong. It means that her doctor's wrong. She shows herself on the scale here with these giant boots on too. Um, and it says, it's hard to tell, but it looks like about 135, which puts her at 5'3" at about 24 BMI, which is totally normal. So yeah, if her doctor's telling her that she's overweight, the doctor's an idiot. The doctor is wrong, not the scale and not the BMI chart. You know, all these people in the comments are talking about how BMI is bullshit. No, if, if the doctor were going by the BMI chart, she would never say that this person, or he would never say that this person is overweight. She also says that she weighed over 215 pounds during her pregnancies and that the doctors told her to stop gaining weight. The implication being that, oh, she, you know, hadn't, didn't have that much fat on her body and look at her now. She looks great. Um, but there is, there is re reason for that. There is a reason that doctors recommend a certain range of weight gain, depending on where you're starting from. Gaining so much weight during a pregnancy may be harmful for you and for the baby. It may increase the risk for certain complications. And in terms of after being pregnant, like, you know, most women are not having this outcome. If you're gaining that weight, it's going to be very hard to get it all off and to get back to a normal weight. M most women gaining that much weight, they are not going to look like this. What happens is you have a pregnancy, you gain a bunch of weight, you lose a lot of it, but you keep a little extra. You get pregnant again, you gain a lot of weight, you lose a lot of it, but you keep a little extra, right? You do that a few times. Now you've got what, 10, 20 extra pounds? it's not good for us, right? So there is a reason that generally doctors are saying, hey, you know, if you're at a normal weight starting pregnancy, you want to gain like 25 to 35 pounds. If you're getting very much over that, it could be fine for you, but it may not. So again, generally they're going to say, hey, maybe try not to gain so much weight. I know it's a tough thing and I've been pregnant and I know that it's, it's, not, <laughs> it's like they can make it sound so easy, right? Like just, hey, don't gain, don't gain any more weight or just gain a couple more pounds. Like, bitch, I'm hungry as shit. What are you talking about? Presumably I had the opposite problem where like I wasn't hungry and it was, it was bullshit. Like I said, I, I get the sentiment, but you know, it's, it's a touchy thing, but we don't, I don't, we don't want doctors to lie to us or to not tell us because a lot of people don't know and they might want that information. I mean, look, the advice used to be to eat for two and we know now that no, 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 you're not, you're not actually eating for two. We've got this guy, he's got a couple of videos that come up pretty high on here where he's just like, it's just like things that he supposedly heard from his doctor and whatever health professor slap your knees. And if you do it enough times after sitting for a long time, you'll fall down. Or, or this thing where like, if you do it long enough, your ankle will lock up. What, what, how is this a health tip? Like what even is this? But also why did you put hashtag health tips? <laughs> and finally, another one from Dr. Stacy. just don't use feminine wash. It's, it's great. That's terrific. It, it still surprises me that these stuff that number one, the stuff is still sold, but also that like people still use it. I really lucked out. I grew up with, you know, my mom who was a former nurse. So she knew not to use this stuff. She always told me like, no, because I would see the commercials for it, the Eve or something, Summer Eve. And she was like, no, you don't use that. It is not good for you. I know it sounds good, but no, you never use that. So I always use, I always knew and I never ever used them, but I had friends that would use them because, you know, it's, you want to be clean and fresh right? It's just crazy. People still don't know. It makes me so sad. This should be something that OBGYN should have, like a little pamphlet <laughs> that they give out every single visit. Hey, no, don't do it. All right, one more because I saw, I saw his face. I saw him just hanging out right there. I had to do it. Coffee, switch out your morning coffee for some citrus and water. He just talks about drinking citrus and in water in the morning and how he's been doing it. Get your day started with this is better than caffeine and other things. Get your digestive fluids flowing. It's thousands of years old. Not with pomelos, but with limes and lemons, but 
give it a shot. The implication is just like, yeah, you want to get coffee out of your diet. What? <laughs> it's actually correlated with a lot of health benefits. So I'm not saying that it's going to protect you from whatever, whatever. It's just a correlation. But there doesn't seem to be any reason to give up coffee again, unless it is interfering like with your sleep or something or you have terrible heartburn and it's affecting that. Right. But otherwise, for just normal, healthy people like, yeah, drink coffee or don't. It's weird to be like this doctor is wrong. But like this is this is consensus at this point. I'm using reputable sources from other doctors. That's what sucks, right? You can't just be like, oh, this person's a doctor, so they're right. No, there are MDs who are anti-vax, right? There are MDs who are anti-fluoride and shit. Yeah. But generally, again, generally, if you're getting advice from a doctor, it's probably going to be better. It's more trustworthy than some girl who calls, like, vaginal discharge lady juice. Yeah, maybe, maybe not super reliable. Although to be frank, I do kind of like lady juice. <laughs> I've never heard that before. And like, I don't know, man, it's, it's, uh, it's resonating. It's resonating with me. Kind of, kind of into it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this very dumb video that it took like 30 minutes <laughs> to make. So I'm not going to lie. This was just the whole time doing it. Like this is dumb. This is dumb. This is dumb. <laughs> this is dumb. But a lot of you wanted it. So, uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I was going to kind of mean, hey, this is a dumb video, but like you wanted it. So enjoy it, stupid idiot <laughs> who would like this video. It's so dumb. What a dummy. Watch it anyway. Give me ad revenue. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I wouldn't have put it up if I actually thought it was just terrible. Hopefully there's interesting stuff in there. And hopefully it is fun. Like, I want to watch fun stuff right now. You know, I don't want to watch super serious shit. I want to watch this fun lady juice stuff. That's what I want to watch. Oh, that came out. Well, eh. thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, support the channel, patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. Oh, false burp. What is that? I don't think I've ever had a, like a fake burp. <laughs> like I thought I've had like, oh, I'm going to sneeze. Nope. I don't know if I've ever had that. I'm going to burp. Nope. Anyway, Animal Crossing, because again, I know that's, that's what you're all here for. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do the video. I'm going to do the, the island tour on the, the switchy thing. I'm just going to have my camera pointed at my, at my switch. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I might just post it on Patreon because it might just be, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Like, what if I post that to the channel and it's like the last video I do for like a week or something. And that's what people see when they come to the channel is <laughs> just an Animal Crossing tour. Maybe that's not great. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm going to try. I've been working like so hard on my island. And I keep being like, all right, I'm going to record it today. No, no, no. Let me do this first. Like, I'm very, very concerned about what you guys think about my island. Apparently, I don't know why. But I think it's time now. You know, I've done a lot. Yeah, I've made it look pretty. Hey, it's got four stars now. So like, you know, although you can just put shit everywhere and you'll get five stars, right? I mean, how does that work? I know you can't have too many trees. I had that for a while where they were like, bitch, this is like the boonies. Get rid of these. <laughs> get rid of these trees. We can't even move. But other than that, can't you just set stuff everywhere as long as it's a good like variety of things and you'll get five stars? Like it doesn't like they can't tell if it looks good, right? If it's like organized or anything, just put stuff everywhere and you'll get five stars. But in my mind, in my heart, Isabella's actually going around checking my island and like, oh girl, I see that little cafe. I like what you did with the flowers here. Ooh, two orchards. Ooh. Oh, I tried Ben and Jerry's new ice cream. They have four, I think. I've tried two. The two of the sunflower butter ones, which I mentioned before I was, because I don't like sunflower butter. It's bitter and it's weird. Uh, but they were good. I tried the, the milk and cookies one and then the mint one, which is like the same thing, I guess. But oh, no, it's not the same thing. The milk and cookies has two different cookies. It's got chocolate chip cookies and it's got like Oreos and vanilla ice cream. The mint one is just mint ice cream with Oreos, I think, or some sort of, you know, not actually Oreos, but whatever Oreo like product. Um, yeah, very good. The first time I think I tried the milk and cookie one first and it was like, oh, I taste sunflower, but I think I just 
I was like looking for it and my brain was like, it's in there, it's in there, you taste it. Because then as I kept eating it, it was like, no, I don't taste sunflower. And my partner was like, nah, I don't taste it. So yeah, very, very good. We ate them too, too quickly. But I haven't tried the Netflix and chilled one. That one's not, didn't it have pretzel or something in it? Oh man, I want to try that one. And then I thought there was another sunflower one. Maybe there are only two. So yeah, I'll be on the lookout for those the next time I go to the grocery store. Ice cream is an essential, right? It's at an essential location. Anything at the Fred Meyer is essential. The Fred Meyer. The Trader Joe's. I will say, man, there's such a difference. You go to Trader Joe's, they've got the line, they're sanitizing baskets ahead of time. Now I know it's a much smaller operation than Kroger, right? But all the employees have masks on. It's, you know, it's pretty nice. You go to Kroger, to Fred Meyer, the employees have masks now. I think they actually require that now that employees have to have masks, but like half of them have them pulled down and they're talking to another employee like a foot away. That employee's got their mask pulled down. <laughs> like I'm, I'm sympathetic because wearing those is horrible and having to wear that all day, man, like, oh, I get it. But you, you gotta, you, you have to, especially you're that close to people. Come on, you gotta wear the mask. In the early days of all this, before there was any sort of shutdown or anything, at least, at least in the US, you know, partners going to the store, he's got this like really nice mask that he uses, you know, doing stuff around the house and everything, mask that he got forever ago at Home Depot. And he's walking around and people are giving him looks like, the oh, fuck motherfucker, like, you know, paranoid, right? And then slowly but surely more people start wearing masks and people are like, oh man, I wish I had that, right? And now like 80% of people I see are wearing masks. Hmm. Don't be afraid to look dumb. You know, there, there are lots of times in life when the right thing to do is to look dumb or to be awkward. You know, like I know it can be obviously not at this point because everyone's doing it, but in the early days it was like, not shaking someone's hand or crossing the street when someone's coming, you know, on the same side of the street. It's like, we don't want to be awkward and it just feels like, ah, oh, so wrong. But, you know, so sometimes doing the right thing means feeling fucking awkward. That's just, that's just life.